Hey everybody, let's talk a little bit about side chaining. Uh, what it is, why you want to use it, and I'm going to make this real quick here, so hang with me. Uh, side chaining basically is an instance to where you can do it with different types of effects. Uh, typically compression is the most popular, but you can do it with uh, other things, EQ and etc, etc. And it's where uh, an effect, like in a compressor, is put on a specific track and the compression uh, is altered by another instrument or another track. Uh, something that's popular that you hear on radio is when the voice comes on that triggers a compressor on background music so the music drops down. That's called ducking. But it's also set up typically with a side chain setup. Another popular instance where you would use side chaining is where uh, you have, say, a bass guitar or a bass uh, instrument and a kick drum, and they're competing with each other, and the kick drum is being drowned out by the bass. And so what you can do is put a compressor on the bass and then have that triggered by the kick drum. So each time the kick drum hits, it will drop the volume of the bass just slightly to allow the kick drum to come through in the mix or when they're blended together. I kind of think of it as side chaining as, as you're coming into the side of the effect. I don't know where the term came from, where if you just if I just put a compressor, let's say on the bass, and I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let's do that real quick. I'm going to go ahead and mute my uh, keyboard instrument. And let's go over here and then we'll just pick the Personas uh, compressor because it does a good job of that. I'm going to go ahead and just drag that into my insert. And that brings up our compressor. Okay, and let me just turn this up a little bit. Hopefully you can still hear me talk. And the kick is actually coming through okay. Let me just bring up the bass. And you can hear that maybe I'm starting to lose my kick drum a little bit. Okay, what I want to do now is, is bring in my, and you can see I'm getting a little compression on the on the bass. The bass is what's triggering the compression. My threshold is, is uh, set to where it will trigger this compressor. Let's go ahead and I'm just going to take my threshold completely off so there is no compression. Okay, uh, compressor on the track not being uh, used for anything. Now I'm going to go over here to my kick drum channel on my drums and I'm going to set up a send and you notice I have the uh, where the send can go to but I have a ch side chain. Uh, I can go either to the bass uh, sound or either to the EQ. You notice I have an instance of that on the insert but let's go to the compressor and now I go ahead and click that and now I've got a send to the compressor. I'm going to just pretty much turn this all the way up. And by the way, that's my kick drum by itself. And I'm just going to solo the bass drum or the bass uh, guitar sound also. Now, when I click the side chain, which was already on there, uh, I'm going to go ahead and Increase the gain. You see that I'm getting some compression each time that the kick drum hits. And you want to make sure that you adjust your parameters good because you can get artificial pumping on the bass. So I'm going to take my attack time, make it really quick and a quick release since this is a pretty quick instance. I'll go ahead and bump up my ratio just a little bit. Now I'm going to turn the compressor off and hopefully uh, when I do that listen to how the kick drum might disappear just a little bit. Off. Really disappeared in there. Let me go ahead and turn it back on. Now I can hear my bass pumping because we're compressing quite a bit. solo everything and 
and my kick is coming through really nicely now. I'll turn my effect off again. Although it's still audible, it's not as audible as when I had the side chaining in, in play. And that, in a nutshell, is side chaining with a compressor. Hope you learned something, and remember to subscribe. We'll catch you guys later.